Buongiorno a tutti, uh, cominciamo questa giornata con uh, la conferenza uh, tenuta da Nico Scutelli, dal professore Nico, dal professori Nico Scutellis e Klimis Aslanidis, collegati um, dall'Università Politecnica di Creta. In particolare volevo fare un saluto eh, ai nostri visiting e ricordare che Nikos eh, Scutellis ha studiato a Venezia e, e poi è ritornato in Grecia, però fa parte eh, della rete di UAV Academic Abroad. E adesso lascerò la parola ai nostri visiting e mh, volevo ricordare al pubblico che qualora avessero domande eh, possono scrivere nella chat e le, e le leggiamo insieme alla fine. Uh, prego Nikos e, e Klimis, vi lascio la parola. Grazie. Grazie. Eh, we have to share screen first. Sei sicuro? Sì. Che ti nella storia Bene. Uh, good morning, Calimera. Good morning to everyone. We're going to start this. Uh, I'm going to start this presentation and then later on uh, Nikos will uh, continue. We want to thank you very much. Uh, we're very glad to be here with you and uh, we are going to say a few words about the workshop we have organized here in Hanya, the online, this online wave workshop. Uh, our theme is uh, historic towns in the post-COVID era, post-COVID ideas for the world town of Hanya. Um, in this uh, particular session we will try to uh to analyze and uh, offer some thoughts about what we can learn from this pandemic and how this is relevant to architecture i'm going to say a few things about what i think is the most important thing that we can learn from this pandemic uh, which is a little bit uh, indirectly um, connected, related to architecture, but is related to architecture. And then Nichols will continue saying uh, his, um, his ideas, uh, something that is a little bit more related to architecture and very much related to the workshop we have organized. So the question is what we can, what can we learn from this pandemic? Uh, this pandemic was something totally unexpected for us, a new experience. Uh, it has not affected the, the, the city of Hanya because uh, uh, it has not directly affected the city of Hanya because there has been just one uh, reported case uh, very recently and no deaths. However, there was a very long, uh, long lockdown uh, and we can now see the very big impact on uh, tourism because this is a city very much uh, depending on tourism. Um, however, during these uh, four months, we have, I think we have uh, had many new experiences and we have learned a lot of things. Uh, the, the pandemic was, as I said before, unexpected to all of us, although it shouldn't be. We all learn from history books, the big impact of pandemics on human history, and we all have learned about uh, great pandemics such as uh, the one in uh, Athens in the 5th century BC during the Peloponnesian War, uh, or such as the great plague of uh, Constantinople of, in the age of uh, Justinian in the 6th century AD. We all know about the uh, 14th century Black Death that had um, that spread to Europe uh, in four years uh, with uh, millions of deaths. It came from the east and then spread to uh, 
the Mediterranean and Western Europe and then to Central Europe and then uh, eventually to, to, the, to Eastern and Northern Europe. And we have uh, recollections of a very recent big uh, pandemic, uh, the one, the so-called Spanish flu that killed millions of people in 1918, which is only 100 years ago. However, uh, we never expect pandemics because we think history is uh, only written for wars and big artistic creations. Uh, although the pandemics have had a major impact in the uh, in human history. Uh, this is another uh, a photograph of a of a newspaper, a local newspaper during the 1918 Spanish flu, showing how lockdown measures were taken in order to deal with the pandemic in a small city in Minnesota, the United States. And then we all know that uh, in all these cases, it was only lockdown measures and quarantine measures that had an effect and uh, allowed people to deal with the pandemic. However, we always tend to forget this. And during these days, we saw many people rejecting these sort of measures and many people expressing strange sometimes dangerous ideas. Uh, and I'm showing you here one example of the President of the United States proposing that we could uh, bring light inside the body or the President of uh, Brazil uh, who said that uh, the pandemic is nothing like more than a little cold and then some strange ideas expressed in the UK's in the UK later uh, rejected. We saw strange ideas and uh, people refusing to accept uh, the pandemic, even in Italy, where we saw the orange vests. And it was in all cases where uh, these uh, uh, anti-scientific ideas uh, prevailed, we saw nothing but death, unfortunately, and I'm showing you here death in the United States, death in Brazil, death in the UK. However, we also heard the voice of reason, the simple thing that uh, if we stay at home, we will be safe and the pandemic will go. Uh, like this Italian mayor uh, on this uh, video on YouTube uh, say. Mm -hmm. So my opinion is that the first and most important thing that we can learn from this pandemic is that at last we have to trust science, we have to trust scientists, not, tr uh, not trust uh, anti-scientific ideas and pseudoscience and do something to um, to, to combat the, the spread of pseudoscientific ideas. Uh, pseudoscience always existed uh, in human history, but the, the, the danger is that with the spread of information through internet, it can get uh, immense dimensions and in the end affect uh, history. And this is something that very dangerous that we have to uh, be careful of. Pseudoscience is, uh, uses a completely different methodology than science and it is very easy to, to distinguish between them. In our case, in the case of COVID-19, uh, we heard many uh, anti-scientific, pseudo-scientific ideas, like it was the 5G towers that were to blame or that it was created in a lab, etc. However, we know that uh, the world is full of these um, um, irrational ideas. Some people reject vaccines, although we know very well uh, from the 20th century on how vaccines have helped uh, humanity. Some other people reject global warming. So there is a big problem 
we have passed from I think therefore I am to I believe therefore I'm right. Unfortunately, in some cases there's nothing we can do about it. Whatever we do, people will continue to believe in uh, anti-scientific ideas. For instance, some people think that the Earth is flat and in, in such cases there's nothing we can do about it. Or some people uh, want to revive paganism. This is a photograph from here, Crete. In some cases, pseudoscientific ideas have been uh, related to a very dangerous, uh, um, very dangerous tendencies uh, to malicious plans. For instance, pseudoscience has been used uh, to to defend uh, racist theories and fascism and Nazism was based on uh, pseudoscientific ideas. I'm showing you, you here an example of uh, the Nazi propaganda uh, for the theory of Aryan um, superiority. Unfortunately, racism has not been eradicated from uh, humanity and we have seen this very recently during the pandemic when we were expecting that um, compassion and love among people would prevail. We saw this um, cruel uh, murder in the United States. And then we saw reaction either in a, a cold blooded way or in a more uh, violent way. Uh, so, pseudoscience may be related to stupidity, let's say, it may be related to malicious plans, and of course it, we know that it is related to profit. I'm so you here, the budget, uh, the product of the market of homeopathy, for instance, in the United States, no, or around the world. So how is this related to architecture? Is there something like pseudo architecture, for instance? I think yes, and I think that this is a danger of our times. Sometimes we see buildings uh, with a very poor design uh, that are trying to uh, to be based on a pseudo scientific theory. Let's say, like for instance, we may see a casino built in on the site of the former um, yeah. airport of Athens that supposedly is inspired, is inspired by the Caryatids, as you see in this photograph. And this is what the plan is. <laughs> and unfortunately, the very same um, government that is uh, that hurt the scientists and the doctors and could deal with the pandemic, it's, this, it's the very same uh, government that is deaf to the voices of architects who are um, uh, against this. Pseudo architecture, if we may call this, is all around the world, like for instance here in China. And again in Athens, a very recent project that we saw, a very central uh, square in the historic city of Athens, uh, was transformed like this during the pandemic. And then right after the lockdown, we saw this project uh, for the most important square of Athens, the Constitution Square, and another view of this. And during the pandemic, uh, we saw this in order to realize the plans that we saw before, which means make big uh, pedestrian ways in the center of Athens and at the same time when people were advised to use their cars instead of public transform, uh, transport, uh, we saw this uh, traffic jam in the center of Athens and the only thing that uh, we can think of is that the pandemic is, uh, well lockdown is over and life is um, returning to what we knew before and 
especially after we saw this during the pandemic in Bournemouth, Britain, uh, we're thinking, I'm thinking that if we change the question from what can we learn to, from the pandemic to what will we learn from the pandemic, the answer may be probably nothing. This is a very uh, pessimist uh, way of thinking. Uh, so I'm giving the floor to Nikos, who may be a little more optimist, as he always is. I'm always uh, very optimist, but uh, not always. Um, I will uh, introduce you to the, th the same theme uh, regarding uh, the city of Hania. It's uh, the second uh, big city of uh, the island of Crete in the south of Greece, in the middle of the Western Mediterra uh, Eastern Mediterranean. And it is a city which uh, is uh, totally uh, characterized by the Venetian uh, occupation and the Venetian uh, walls, Venetian monuments uh, built uh, during uh, the uh, 12, 11 and uh, uh, 1645 when uh, um, the city and the rest of uh, the island uh, was occupied by the, by the Ottoman Empire. Uh, so, uh, um, I think we think that uh, the theme of the uh, historical center of Hania uh, or La Canea in the Venetian times until uh, 1645, as I saw it before, um, could be a theme which is uh, much more combined with uh, what the Venetian, the students in the UAV uh, can afford, what they know, and uh, probably is somehow uh, to see another kind of Venice, uh, a long way from Venice, um, which seems to be like uh, the Sestiere of Castello, uh, the Sestiere, uh, the part of Venice where um, the, uh, the arsenal is related with the uh, habitation area, the area of the housing and uh, the housing of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the people of the who were working in uh, the arsenal. So these uh, similitu uh, similarities, uh, I, we hope that uh, can be very useful and um, make easier uh, the, the, the connections of what uh, uh, students see in Venice and what uh, they can uh, expect uh, in another part like uh, Hania. Uh, what about Crete and the, and the uh, quarantine? Um, we had only one uh, death uh, in the central hospital of uh, Heraklion in the, uh, and uh, he was a Greek-German uh, professor who came uh, to give lectures in, the, in our university in Heraklion uh, between, uh, in the beginning of uh, March. And after that, we had uh, only uh, 17 cases who were uh, totally um, cured. cured. And uh, what has happened then? We had no coronavirus in Crete until last week when uh, uh, the airports opened again. Uh, so yesterday we had three people um, who came uh, from abroad and uh, they are uh, going to be cured in uh, the hospitals of Crete. And we are very surprised that uh, probably we will be having more and more um, victims in Crete during the summertime than during the period of the quarantine in any case. Uh, so uh, what we invite uh, our students to do is to see the city, to see the place, to see the built uh, environment uh, in different ways. For example, in this uh, plan of Hania, uh, we see uh, the walls, we see the monuments, we see the, the roads, and probably, yes, there are many houses inside it. But in the second um, uh, plan of Hania, we see only the structures that uh, uh, works for against the uh, against the enemy. Uh, the, this is uh, the uh, the military machine uh, Venetians has built uh, in all the cities in the Mediterranean. They 
where I, that were making part of the Stato Damar of the Venetian Republic. And here we see this, the city, but without the houses. And probably we see the city without its uh, inhabitants and uh, probably only of, of the city of the militaries. So we invite the students to see the city without tourists. Or better to say, we invite the students to see the city as in some of the ways Aldo Rossi was speaking about uh, the city, speaking about the monuments, speaking about the, the net of the roads made by the people but without the people. So uh, we propose to our students two areas in Hania that uh, can be uh, used for uh, students' housing, Casa dello Studente. Uh, students' housing because we want to, to be again in our cities, because uh, the, this plug uh, has demonstrated that uh, we need to be ourselves in our cities not to continue to transform the old cities into museums, not to continue to transform the old cities into hotels, but uh, to be the cities for the people who live inside and to be the cities who, which can be visited by, by the, the tourists, but not in such massive way we have known last times, last periods. So one of the areas we give to the students is that one close to San Nicolo in the area of Splanzia today. It is an area which has been uh, or heavily bombed uh, during the Second World War. So there are many empty areas in order to build and complete uh, the, uh, the, the urban um, landscape. And the second area is close to the um, Neoria Moro, the Arsenal Smoro, that was on this last part of uh, the port of Hania, where also we have an empty area we'll see then. So here is San Nicolo, uh, a Venetian, uh, no Venetian, a Catholic church who, which became a mosque, a, um, a mosque, a Muslim mosque, and then became again a Christian church, Orthodox church, with this modern um, cement uh, uh, bell, tower. bell towers. Yes, and then you see here the voids that the bomb bombing has created. The second area is where the two Neo, um, Moro uh, uh, arsenals has been positioned and the not finished arsenals after them, which remains like uh, um, like ruins of every time and the big and the big bombed area that today is is used like a parking area and the close to the, the Ballard uh, Bembo. And this is the area, the wall of the, of the Moro Arsenal and new hotels close to that area. So, what uh, yesterday in the introduction of our course uh, I proposed to our students is uh, related to the architecture of uh, housing for students, and it is related also of what uh, we can know after the, uh, this uh, pandemic. I think that after this pandemic, we must know how to be in our houses and how to try to understand ourselves, how to study more in our houses, and probably use less the computer. How to make an introspection, like uh, uh, Saint Augustine in this uh, picture of Antonello da Messina. And I think that this picture gives the lesson of the architecture in all scales. Uh, 
the architecture of the road where I am and I watch inside, the architecture of the big public building, and then the architecture of the housing uh, in uh, the part in the um, uh, um, left part of the of the of this uh, vision we have uh, the the house of uh, saint uh, augustine of the house of everybody which watches to a landscape and then on the other part we have uh, uh, a public building and in the middle we have a room which is combined by the furniture of the room of saint augustine we think that this can be a manifesto for what our students can think about uh, the students' housing. And the students' housing can be related with traditional ways uh, to create the place where you live, and it can have uh, many functions together, being a room and being a, a piece of furniture too. Uh, it happens in Norway, it happens in Greece, but it happens in China, in Italy, and in South America, we think. And what about uh, students' housing? I think that uh, the project of Aldo Rossi for students' housing in Chieti, and um, I mean Aldo Rossi also because uh, we work for WAVE in Venice, and uh, uh, in my studies, but uh, easily we can uh, rethink about uh, the lesson, the big lesson of Aldo Rossi and the big lesson of, of uh, the human history in architecture as the lesson which can uh, all, also today feed our thought and our projects. So this uh, continuous um, uh, uh, re rethink about what Aldo Rossi was seeing in uh, his uh, in uh, his baths in Adriatica or in uh, the Tyrrhenian Sea uh, can reappear in the projects and uh, this fresh air we have uh, to breathe and uh, we need to breathe after the uh, the pandemic is um, is given by this project and in this project has given uh, the big scale and the great scale of uh, of what is uh, the combination of the small scale and the big public building. So to rethink about the way we are in our rooms, about the way we, we communicate uh, with the exterior, not uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in this high speed uh, we are used to until now, to, to be until now we are used to in a continuous movement as um, as architects as professors and as tourists them and people continues to move from what from one part of there to the other but by then does they gain anything does we get do we gain anything probably what we can learn from this pandemic is to learn how to be in our rooms and how to to become better using what is around us and uh, the uh, the, uh, th these visions of uh, the room in Holland and the room of uh, Aldo Rossi can give us uh, this uh, meaning of what uh, uh, we can uh, gain after this pandemic. So, uh, I want to thank you about uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, possibility to communicate and to speak about it uh, with uh, the rest of the wave all around the world. And uh, um, we are ready here to to discuss with you, to discuss with the other uh, places uh, or, or Venice about uh, this uh, proposal we have given to our students or about what architecture could uh, uh, offer to people after this uh, crisis. Especially in Greece, 
it's a second crisis which comes quite to one year after the finish or the former finish of uh, this uh, economical crisis because the pandemic has made us uh, to enter in a second uh, crisis which uh, is also an economical crisis because uh, in Greece the 50% of our um, income is from tourists this crisis becomes a real big problem and uh, it is important to understand if uh, we need to have this massive tourism of another kind of tourism so all uh, this uh, can be combined in our thoughts in our project of uh, this uh, uh, of this the days that uh, comes so thank you thank you very much uh, what I want to say is that uh, you started promising that you will be optimistic and then in the end I think you too were a little pessimistic. You talked <laughs> about economic crisis and... Uh, yes, it's because uh, we, we had this uh, uh, closing of, uh, of our economic activities and then we have uh, a very limited uh, uh, tourists um, come in coming in our countries and we it is sure that in the winter time even if we will be not having uh, the pandemic we hope not but it's sure that we'll be having an economical crisis and uh, just uh, yesterday here in Hania uh, two ministers uh, were here speaking about new projects for the um, for the historical city and they were explaining us that we must uh, produce uh, the projects very um, in, in, in a fast way in order to uh, assume money which are coming from uh, the European community uh, in order to reactivate uh, buildings, reactivate economy through other ways that are not only tourism. So architecture for our uh, for our uh, country uh, has uh, a big role in uh, in this uh, because uh, uh, we have known to go on building, 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 and building again. Uh, so it, I want to come back in what um, Klimis was saying before that uh, it is important for us to understand which are the fundamentals of architecture and not arrive to, the, to, the, to this uh, uh, Dubai architecture that he has called so, uh, soda architecture. The Dubai architecture is something that is very easily to be used by the bad politicians. And from one side, uh, Europe, uh, ma many countries of Europe, America, Brazil, uh, Britain, uh, it's a pity to say that it is in the, in the hands of very bad politicians. And the coronavirus crisis has uh, given us the possibility to understand better what socialism means. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nikos. Thank you, Klimis. Thank you very much. Um, grazie a tutti. Uh, attendo due minuti per vedere se ci sono delle domande che arrivano dagli studenti. Attendiamo un attimo. Ok, penso che in questo forse gli studenti saranno già alle prese con uh, i corsi, 
ma se, penso che se qualcuno fosse interessato può anche scrivervi via mail su, successivamente. Sì, speriamo anche noi. Uh, purtroppo il, uh, tutti questi mesi uh, che abbiamo fatto lezioni uh, via internet uh, era molto difficile, cioè il sistema è tale che non dà Uh, no, non dà spinta per fare una maggiore discussione sulle cose. E non è solo nostra questa constatazione, anche di altri professori, lo vediamo anche con la discussione delle tesi che abbiamo fatto la settimana scorsa, uh, si poteva parlare molto meno, perché il sistema probabilmente non è tanto... Aspetteremo magari che la, uh, la scienza dell'elettronica ci dia altre possibilità nel futuro, però mh, comunque uh, bisogna che ci ritroviamo, bisogna che ci riabbracciamo tutti quanti. Assolutamente. Voi comunque in parte avete cominciato, uh, magari diciamo agli spettatori, che invece voi avete un gruppo di studenti uh, lì a Creta che seguono Wave dal vivo, giusto? Sì. Quindi sì, sì. state sperimentando in qualche modo questa sorta di wave misto, e siete un po' pionieri forse di questo e vedremo alla fine di questa settimana, di queste tre settimane, il, cosa succederà insomma. Probabilmente nel wave del 2021, sperando di farlo a Venezia, queste esperienze possono riapparire all'inizio certo. per portare avanti poi di nuovo le cose da dove erano cominciate uh, 15 anni fa. Certo, eh. sicuramente quest queste nuove tecnologie ci aiuteranno probabilmente per sperimentare anche nuove forme didattiche, quindi no, non prendiamo di buono ecco, qual che qualcosa da quello che è successo. Ok. Okay. Grazie molto. Vedete, chiudiamo, saluto tutti, e, um, grazie ancora e buona giornata e buona buon lavoro. Giornata. Good morning. Bye. Bye.